Hi, here's a quick, uh, who, well, who knows how quick, a drawing video on uh, drawing a wine bottle, in this case, a white wine bottle, which has a bit of a different, usually a uh, proportion sort of thing. But first I'm just gonna talk about um, sighting the ideas of sighting and measuring and transferring. Now technically I'm sure these things have uh, their, uh, their definitions but I've decided I'm gonna um, I'm gonna invent my own. <laughs> I'm deciding what they mean. No, this will line up mostly with uh, what other artists and books and instructional things. But I try to simplify it, I, I will say. And um, so what I'm going to call sighting, I'm going to um, associate with vision and my sight that I use my eyeballs for. So really what I'm going to start doing when I'm sighting something is looking at it and analyzing it with my eyes. And I'm going to start noticing several things and I'm going to start placing some some indication marks of where I'm noticing things. And the first thing I want to notice is what I call the top right and the bottom and the left. So those are going to be the the um, when I'm talking about that I'm talking about the furthest the, the point on whichever whatever I'm drawing that's closest to the top edge, the point that's closest to the right edge, bottom edge, and left edge. And if this was drawing from life and out in the world, it would be an imaginary edge, but um, it would still sort of be there and something that is very helpful to, um, to think about. So t the top. That one was not so bad. The furthest right point is going to be sort of over here. The furthest, uh, furthest, lowest bottom point is going to be down here. You can probably tell I was already playing with this, but let's see. The furthest left is something like that. So that's all great. And initially I'm going to use um, those points to create what's called a, uh, a bounding box or a notional space. But I'm going to um, imagine a rectangle going through all those points that would be um, going around this object. And I'm just going very light and sketchy. Might even say sloppy, but that's okay. I want to get on to the fun part, but I do want to be somewhat careful. So that's a great thing to start out with, just as far as understanding the proportions of this object that I'm going to be drawing. So I used my eyes to find the, the top right and the bottom and the left, and then I'm imagining this rectangle around it, bounding box, notional space, frame thing. So I've done that, I'm going to keep citing things and keep looking for um, significant things that I'm going to be able to, um, to see pretty easily and are sort of important in, in kind of breaking up this shape and simplifying this object into even more simple shapes. So what I'm going to do uh, first is I'm going to notice, and like a lot of objects, 
we're drawing, we can break them down into simple shapes that are a little bit easier to measure and therefore a little bit easier to uh, manipulate and understand. But I'm going to imagine that this lower part of the wine bottle is best, basically a rectangle that comes to about there. I'm also going to um, notice that I'm, I'm drawing probably what I should have done first, but um, notice that what I'm drawing is, is symmetrical. And anytime I'm drawing something symmetrical, I want to um, sketch in a center axis. I'm going to say I, I should have done that before the, uh, that should be sort of the first thing I do after maybe even everything, but um, it's, it's fine. Just make sure you do it. That's okay for now. Um, I'm gonna try switching this guy seems a little unruly. So that's all great. I'm gonna go back to sort of breaking it up into um, into shapes, and um, I'm gonna uh, let's see a couple obvious landmark points that are going to be pretty easy to find and are pretty obvious is the point where this sleeve thing, God, I hope it's called a sleeve, um, stops here and I can think of basically the shape that this creates as kind of its own rectangle really. Um, in reality, it's a, a three-dimensional cylindrical shape. Well, the whole thing is cylindrical, but um, I'm going to break it down to that. So I've got this center axis. I've got my bounding box that I'm looking at this thing and understanding. I'm starting to break it down into, um, into manageable shapes. The other, I, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sort of, it, it's not as obvious, but um, I feel like there's sort of a, uh, I could simplify this shape, I think, relatively easy. I'm going to sort of straighten out those curves and basically think of this one shape as a, as a sort of a tall tapering trapezoid. Hey, that was fun to say. Ta ta ta. I'm going to think of this as its own little shape right here. It didn't seem to quite fit into that curve. I could have simplified it, but um But I feel like turning that into its own small trapezoid. Part of learning how to uh, draw curves is simplifying them and breaking them down into a series of straight lines. Sometimes it's really obvious what that series of straight lines is going to be. Sometimes a little more um, confusing. And oftentimes, like here, it's going to take a judgment call. Um, I'm just sort of deciding it's mostly at this point right here. So 
been citing and you might say sketching in guidelines. But I don't, I don't really consider this measuring just yet, technically. Just trying to gather information. This little um, light of mine. Sorry. <laughs> now this little shape right here, you could think of it as its own sort of uh, little rectangle. And there's a couple other helpful things to do in, in depending on if I'm going to draw this just um, at the same size and proportions. It can be really handy to, um, to imagine what the, if I broke this down into, um, I found the midpoints. I mean, I've already found this midpoint, but if I, um, section this off into halves and quarters. I'm making a real rough guess right now. That's not very close at all, I see. But um, that's gonna help. That's just gonna help me sort of understand what goes where. So let's see, let me, get, let me, let me try that a little bit better. Let's see if that's about half. Usually if I'm really going general, I'll I'll start out with just fingers. If I'm really just getting trying to get a ballpark figure. And then I'll use my pencil. And my pencil is not as long as it would be helpful at this point, but um I'm gonna cope with it. I think it's gonna come down a little bit more. Oh, I lied. I'm going to find a longer pencil to make it a little bit more accurate. Are you about halfway? That's getting there. It's about there. I suppose technically I'm measuring at this point, but I'm still trying to think of it it's just gathering information and learning about this thing that I'm about to draw, soaking it in and really familiarizing myself with it. Um, it takes a while to really kind of understand what's going on. So those are um, nice vague marks, but um, see if they're somewhat, somewhat close. The um, I will talk about the proportions of the rectangle, but I'm going to leave that out for right now because that gets into some mathy stuff. So go slower than I'm going right now, and and just be somewhat accurate with those. I'm going to call those okay for now, though. The other thing I'm going to do is sort of notice um, up here and indicate where those guys are going to, um, the, the, uh, the cylinder meets with the box right here at these, at this point right here. And it's going to be helpful to think of that negative shape when I'm transferring this and that negative shape as well. So when I start measuring and transferring, what I like to think of that is really when I start really taking my pencil and taking some measurements by using the pencil as a measuring tool. For here, I'm measuring how wide it is. I would probably also measure 
how tall it is. Once again, I'm, I'm sort of stalling on um, the uh, the overall proportion. I have some videos on that as well. Right now, I'm, st I'm making some additional marks of where some really obvious changes take place. The label. I suppose that should have been in my citing section. So suffice to say, you'll sort of go back and forth between all these, but I, I do like to at least clarify that um, the notion that if you're just talking about citing, a lot of times people just assume that you understand that that means all three of these, including the transferring, which is what I have found to be um, one, of the, one of the trickier parts of this whole thing, especially when you start scaling up and down. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to um, shift my drawing board over here. And I'm going to just be looking at this information here and beginning to transfer it over here. So I'm going to be taking measurements and transferring that information. This fashion that I'm doing right now where I'm going um, the same dimensions or what's called one-to-one -one, um, is, is pretty easy to measure and transfer. Um, right now I'm going to measure, I don't know if technically that's measuring, but um, estimating where the um, the top is, and I'm going to transfer that information over here. Just sketching in real lightly. And I'm going to come down here. I'm going to sort of estimate, measure where the bottom is and I'm going to transfer that information over here. Probably not exact, but um, I'll adjust. <laughs> Let's see, I know I want this center axis. And look at that, it goes all the way through the top and the bottom here. So I'm going to um, transfer that over here. And this is when I, um, uh, I'm pretty much just choosing where I want this to be. I could try to make sure that's exactly in the middle of my piece of paper, but I'm not so worried about that. So really right now I'm kind of measuring the uh, and transferring the, the bounding box. So I've got that top part which is pretty obvious and simple to just extend right across. This guy to extend right across. Kind of crouching down here, excuse me, something like that. And I've transferred this and I'm going to lean back and make sure that indeed that looks like it's vertical. And now is when I um, really kind of start needing to do some a little bit more tricky measuring and transferring. I'm going to take the, um, the width. I'm going to use my pencil to measure the width. I'm going to make sure that that's basically the same width that's down here. Sometimes these wine bottles will taper a decent amount. and um, But I'm going to say it's kind of close to that. So I want that width to be on this side 
and this side. And that can take a little bit of um, guesswork, a couple tries, because I do want to make it centered. So it's about from there to there, but I want to make sure that um, I'm going to tighten up, clarify some of my my points here. Do you want to make sure that it's equidistant? And it looks to me like this is a little bit shorter than that. Not a lot, but enough to want to adjust. Let's check that out again. I think that's okay for starting out. And I sure hope that um, I'm going to sketch in really lightly the outer rectangle with some really wacky, not that straight lines. That's okay. I'll clean it up. Sometimes it's a better idea to really just not even draw the line and imagine where the point is going to meet up. And then kind of come at it from this point, from that point, and from the middle. This point, this point, in the middle. Oop. Now I'm going to check. Check to see just how if this is looking really like the same width and straight up and down and the points are equidistant from the center axis and the center axis is indeed vertical and straight up and down. It can be helpful to use your pencil where was that longer pencil I had? Um, just sort of line it up like that and see how close you are. A lot, of, a lot of this, and what I talk about a lot, is making sure you you know what you're judging something against. So I want to make sure that this line is horizontal. I want to make sure that I'm judging it next to what I know to be horizontal, which is the edge. Same over here. Here. So that's good. That's fine. That's good. It's fine. It's good. Clean up a little bit. Um, oftentimes, after doing this, it's fun to, um, well, knock back. And by knock back, I mean. Um, Erasing away lightly. You can also um, just take your kneaded eraser and make it into a, a snake and just kind of roll it around here. Sometimes I'll, if it's nice paper and I know I'm going to be able to erase it a bunch, I'll just sort of blend it out too. If I had a Kleenex, I would do that, but I don't have one in reach. So now, especially when I'm drawing one-to-one -one like this, it's going to be not so tough to um, 
transfer this other information that I'm thinking about. This was the top of that uh, sort of lower rectangle. If that was a weird sound that just came through the microphone, pretend I know how to edit that out. So that's there, the halfway point. Let me see the, um, this sleeve tip cover thing that I hope that's what that's called. I draw enough wine bottles, you'd think I would have figured it out by now. I'm measuring the height of this and transferring it over here. Let's see, I'm going to think about this point, this height, and I'm going to directly transfer it over here. Let's see, I could do the label, sure, I'm sort of doing the, the stuff that's sort of easy, uh, direct across. That's the top. That's the bottom. But all this, like I have hopefully been making painfully clear, is light and easily erasable. And very adjustable. But I want to get, I want to feel confident at, at this, at this um, stage, this phase, this sort of core level. of this thing that I'm drawing. It can be certainly fun to dive in and just start going for it. Um, but once once things are off, it's, it's, it's tempting to not want to adjust them in ways that will, yeah, leave you feeling not satisfied with your drawing. So that's good, that's good, that's good. Mm -hmm. So now these guys, the, uh, the width of the, uh, of the neck here, the top neck, I want to um, think about where these points fall on the top line compared with the outer bounding box. And like pretty much all, maybe not all, um, a lot of wine bottles, the width is about one third the total with one third over here, the width being another third, and then another third over here. Another way to think of this is making, uh, measuring the distance between here and here. I could have imagined a, uh, a midpoint of, from there to there. And then think of this third point in relation to that. So there's a couple different ways, but I'm just gonna try to kind of eyeball it in here and. Think of, as it, think of it as a third, and a third, and a third. And you may notice as I sort of keep going along, my lines will get a little bit more refined and a little bit more clarified.
So I'm going to block, so just start blocking in. And I've sort of already certainly done some. Um, this, I'm going to worry about this lower curve, which is a really fun thing to draw because it consists, consists of an ellipse. But I'm just first going to think of this whole body portion being its own rectangle. So that's kind of already something I have basically blocked in. Now I'm going to think about this one though. The, um, so I do have, when I'm really, um, I want to make sure that the points that I'm, my guide marks are both accurate and in relation to the height of how they relate to everything, as well as their distance from the midpoint, the center axis. So for this sort of tall, that's what, what do I call it, tall tapered trapezoid, I want to make sure that um, it lines up accurately. And I also want to make sure that the distance from the midpoint to the width to that side is the same as the distance from there to there. This, um, this technique of pinching and tips and stuff like that it kind of lends itself more to um, drawing bigger stuff. Your fingers can get kind of cramped and um, but practice it and you'll get the idea. It's a little bit tricky because it's kind of, I, I'm looking at the tip of my pencil and then the, um, then where my thumb pinches, that, that does create sort of a weird angle between the, uh, my tapering the point of the pencil. So it makes it a little bit tricky. I could do this as well, or I'm just, Kind of measuring there, and I think I think I want to bring this in a touch. But just know that any tool like this or this longer pencil or a knitting needle, people use all sorts of things, but. Um, You'll need to practice it and understand some of the, the little oddities of any given technique. So at this point, I'm just going to make a simple, this um, simplified shape of my tall tapered trapezoid. I'm having fun with that, as you can probably tell. And at each stage here, when I'm drawing, blocking these in, I'm, I'm refining where the center axis is. I'm refining whether it's straight up and down or curving a little bit. And I'm comparing one side to the other side, the symmetrical aspect of drawing cylindrical things. This is really helpful to do at the beginning, fr from the beginning, instead of later on and, and really sort of being lost and not sure why it's not symmetrical. So 
So I'm looking, especially for this trapezoid. I didn't say it that time. I'm looking at these two and making sure that indeed they look um, like mirrors of each other. And they seem pretty close, close enough to want to move on. This one, the, um, the angles, the angles start straightening out a little bit. And then once I'm up here, I'm just going to sketch in this rectangle to represent this top cylinder portion as a simple rectangle at first. And I will be adjusting. And this, the adjusting, I want to make sure I'm addressing both sides and keep comparing, keep measuring that the distance, distances seem the same. This one looks like it come out a little bit more over here. This line I want to clean up a little bit more. So that is um, some basic sighting, measuring, and transferring in this um, sort of blocking in. This is a construction approach. Let me see, this guy was up here. But what I'm going to do next is, um, is a similar thing, but do it, try to do it in a, uh, a scaled up version. And that's going to take a little bit more measuring and, and understanding how to break down proportions and um, how to resize rectangles and triangles in an accurate proportional fashion, which is no easy thing. Well, maybe it is for some of you, not for me. So I'm going to let that be good for now. And we'll come back to that one later. Oh, it's sunny.